How did you enjoy the first ever viewer submission of wines? Oh, is this a viewer submission? Yeah. Oh, you don't oh. cross that. No, no, I just, uh, okay, cool. I'm really sorry for some of the comments that I made about these wines. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, welcome back to Wine for the People. Uh, something a little bit different this week. So one of our good friends on the Discord channel, Liam, uh, who goes under the Discord name Wine Out West, uh, was lovely enough to actually send us a bunch of wine. So he's actually based out in WA, so we've got six WA wines in front of us ready to try. Uh, and we're going to see what we think of them. Full disclosure, I actually know what the wines are and I actually know the prices of these wines, so I'm not going to guess kind of what they are and what I'd pay for them. I'm just going to assess the quality and how much I would buy, but the other boys, they have no idea. So yeah, address below. If you want to send us some wine, we'll send you some back, but let's not muck around too much longer and get into some Western Australian wine tasting. You know what, like having the Discord wine sent to us has reminded me of? It's like uh, back in the day watching like Saturday morning Disney and they used to get like packages sent in from people, except instead of getting a shitty drawing of Lilo and Stitch by a four-year-old, we're getting fucking wine sent. I, I feel like we've made it. This has something that's really interesting uh, that we don't often see in Australian wines, or typically, to be honest, wines that are either um, Aussie, or yeah, Aussie would be it. We see it a little bit out of New Zealand, we see a little bit out of Germany, a lot of European whites, but this is like phenolic ripeness. There's a, a vegetal quality to this, but not in a bad way, in a really, 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 really good way. Great texture, lovely phenolic grip. There's like a nice structural tannin to the wine as well. Good acidity, a little bit of residual sweetness, and the flavor is delicious. Like very tropical, very fresh, kind of like pina colada in Southeast Asia. So like I'm on the beach in Indonesia drinking a pina colada. So it's got like this really tropical vibe that's definitely not localized, but it's got this like, you know, hint of these kind of really awesome like herbs and spices and acidity and funk like that kind of comes from, comes from the food. So, oh man, this is killer. Very drinkable, I'll tell you that. Like, that's extremely drinkable actually. Kind of what I, exactly what I want from that style of wine. Like there is that little bit of back palate acidity, but it's not, it's not making me pull a face. Like I've just had a warhead, like a sour lolly sort of thing, which is when you get really sort of like, oh, I don't know if I like that. But it just, someone's actually spent a lot of time with this, so. I'm gonna say it's gonna be like 45 bucks and I'm going to buy six. Half to have soon with friends who can probably help better explain what's going on. Half to put in the cellar because if my friends can't tell me what's going on with this wine, then only time will tell. Number two, lots of like nashi pear, like orchard fruits, stone fruit, stuff like that, custard apple. Okay. Um, that is less salty, more sour. So more heading in that direction where I was talking about the last wine didn't go to those places where it's sort of like making you pucker up your lips a little bit. But what this isn't giving me is like heartburn, which some white wines do give me. Just like straight up, this is an unpleasant drinking experience. This doesn't do that. That acid. That is, uh, that's a lot of acid. And I love it. I like wines, uh, if you've been watching this show for a little while, you'll know that I like wines that hurt me. I'm a little bit of a masochist when it comes to wines, particularly white wines. Thrilling acidity, really racy. And a nice, lovely texture too. It reminds me of some piano, and I know there's a piano in this lineup, full disclosure, and I reckon this might be it for sure. Give me three bottles of that one. It's just less my style. Um, it'd actually probably be lovely with fish. You wouldn't need to squeeze your lemon over the fish. You could just have a glass of that on the side. Yeah, I'm gonna grab six of that. Um, I drink a lot of piano for obvious reasons, but I think this is something that I would actually reach for outside of the the, one, the wines that I work with. I'm going to drop around about 28 bucks and I'm going to buy three bottles. Not because of lack of quality, just a bit of a lack of interest, but I do really, really, really dig the palate on this. That, I would hope maybe would put into the cellar and in about five, six years time, I think would be a really interesting drink. The only little red wine to line up. Uh, we have uh, purple hues. It looks like it's been naturally settled. No doubt about it, this is Cabernet. I already knew that. But you know, you can smell it and it's like, you know, you can you can still get the full Cabernet vibes here. Oh yeah, yeah, that's big. I've actually started to come around to bigger red wines. I've started drinking them that have been aged appropriately, like drinking something that's like 15 years old as opposed to drinking something that's one years old that's had the time to sort of develop a little bit. Right, where did that come from? Uh, $90 and 12, I think that is bonkers. That is like old school done really well. You know, if you served this up to me and said, hey, this is really fine Bordeaux, like a crew class A, I'd be like, yeah, it is, it's great. That's a gorgeous take on Cabernet. It's fresh and bright, it's still got chewy tannin, but it's got this lovely playful, 
pretty red fruit thing, like red currants and raspberries and bright red cherries as well. Like you don't often see that kind of primary bright fruit from this variety. Really, really cool take on it. There's a little bit of stemminess to it, like a little bit of green, which is making me go down the sort of Cabernet route as opposed to a Shiraz. Like Shiraz, I'm looking for more sort of like peppery sort of um, spicy notes, whereas this is very much so like big ripe fruit. This will reward drinking now. Man, the tannin. And the length of this just keeps going, going, going. Good reward cellaring now and uh, well and truly into the future. There's at least 10, 15 years of really interesting development in this. Well, I reckon this could be the Margie River. Margie River. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Henry, why would you be guessing Margaret River? That seems like a really informed guess. The reason I'm guessing Margaret River is the only Western Australian wine region I'm familiar with. So I figure one of these is going to be uh, Margaret River. And if it does end up being, I won't talk about all this like indecision that I had and then it's the only one I'll just be like, yeah, guys, come on. Like, pfft. That doesn't scream Margaret River to you. Wake up. Oh, phased by the haze. Yeah, definitely some uh, natural settling here. I personally re enjoy that. I'm rewatching um, Breaking Bad at the moment. In the first season where Walt blows Jesse's mind by producing glass, right? Like completely crystal clear crystal meth. This looks like the first batch that Badger and Jesse made together where Badger's like, yo, that's the shit. And now all of a sudden Jesse's got standards because he's been hanging out with Walt. So this looks like some uh, meth that's been cooked by people who aren't as skilled as a chemistry teacher. Wow, what a fun metaphor. All right, let's see what it tastes like. I don't have a lot to say about this one. Literally, it tastes like water. It is so, so delicate for flavor. I'm not too sure there's anything there. There's not a lot of acid. It is a very, very muted nose. So uh, I imagine the intent for this wine is something that's just easy drinking, easy swaffing, uh, drink and glug and have fun. If it was anywhere north of like 30 bucks, I think you'd kind of be taking the piss. I feel like this wine needs to open up a bit more, but it's got some nice kind of, I love the texture here. I love that kind of custard apple peach thing, which is indicating Swan uh, Swan Valley or uh, Barga River Shannon. You guys know I'm a big Shannon guy and I think uh, Liam's definitely played the man here and sent me some Shannon. There's a sort of nuttiness sitting there like a hazelnuts or chestnuts sort of thing. Not peanuts, you very rarely get peanuts in wine. But yeah, this sort of kind of smells like nutty dog. There is no layering of flavors. It is like, I don't even know if there is any flavor in this wine. I think that's kind of the point. I, I hope that is the intent of the winemaker. Uh, I would buy I'd buy three bottles in the hope that maybe we'll see a bit of flavor development over time. Maybe it'll be an interesting variety or handling technique, some kind of context that would explain why this wine is the way it is. One number five. Uh, back to the barley colored highlights that I love. Ooh. That's interesting. Margaret River's got a great long history of Chardonnay. It's a fantastic region for it. You know, they've got some of the best Australian Chardonnays of all time coming from that region. They're for the likes of Lewin Estate and Cullen. It smells fantastic. Yeah, oak. As soon as I smell oak and a white wine, I'm just like, get the button there. Chardonnay! Like, it just as soon as there's oak involved, you know what I mean? Yeah, it smells like wood, baby. Oh, it's a gorgeous wine. No, great on the palate. The oak is a little bit overpowering. I think this is slightly more oak than it is grape. I think that potentially could tell us exactly where it's from. This is a really kind of low ripeness, I think, Chardonnay that's been harvested quite early. Uh, great sal salinity, that great salty profile is just like so perfect down the middle of the wine. What is it? It's something really cool. It's almost got like a, so you get this nice bit of butter and then as that sort of starts to leave your mouth, it's almost like uh, musk sticks. You know those things that uh, you used to pretend that you were smoking cigarettes back in primary school, like the little fad sticks? What were they called back in the day? I'd pay around about 30 bucks a bottle for it and I'd buy three bottles. To get me to spend more on this and to buy more on this, I just want to see maybe a little bit better fruit ripeness so I can actually see more presence of the variety, more so than the presence of oak. Could be something maybe, it's just a very young wine, but we'll see how we go. See what the other guys think, mate. They might have liked it a little bit more than I did. Last but not least, another turbid white. We're leaning more into that orange spectrum. Fiano-y or something like that off the bat, just because I know that we've made a couple of green Fianos in our time. I'm gonna drink that. This doesn't have a lot of, um, palette weight, shape, or complexity to it. There's a small amount of tannin, small amount of grip at the front. That's fun. The the green chili doesn't really flow onto the palette. It is that sort of passion fruit vibe. The fact that it doesn't have a lot of complexity on the palette probably tells me a little bit more, perhaps is like an early harvested something or other. Wow, 
I love that. I fucking love that. That is uh, one of the lineup for me. Absolutely no worries. The tropical thing is so lovely. It's like lychee. Yeah, all of those like lovely kind of fruit salad, yummy, yummy fucking wiggle style wine. Big win. Awesome. Confected, not super sweet. The finish that that one has, this kind of presents it straight up the front. Like it's got this really smooth. Yeah, it feels like it's hugging the middle of my tongue. And then it's just like, ah, oh, but also I'm fun on the weekend because it's got this little bit of acid at the finish. Really cool expression. I I would hope it wouldn't be... Uh, I'm going to use the magic number here. Press the magic number button. Wah, 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 wah. 38 bucks. I'm going to buy 12. What a way to finish. I'm not just being nice. Liam, you've got great taste. I didn't buy less than six bottles of anything you showed me here. These are all awesome. Uh, so thank you very much for that. Western Australia in a nutshell right here. And I think that's really fucking excellent. Let's not muck around. Uh, let's get the boys in. All right. Now... How did you enjoy the first ever viewer submission of wines? Oh, is this a viewer submission? Yeah. Oh, you don't oh. cross that. No, no, I just, uh, okay, cool. I'm really sorry for some of the comments that I made about these wines. <laughs> well, guys, you got a very unbiased report from me. I, I was actually like really enjoying all of these wines. I really They enjoyed... all had a place. They yeah. all had an absolute place I on the table. I enjoyed yeah. every single wine. I didn't, didn't buy less than six. Right. Um, and like, for me, I, I know what the wines are. I know what the prices are. So okay. I've got a bit of a different perspective to you guys, but okay. uh, I really enjoyed this lineup. I thought it was great. Having tasted them, I know what they are and how much they cost as well. So we're on the <laughs> well, same Well, I have uh, wine number one. Mm -hmm. Loved this. Loved this too. Yeah, I thought you guys did because most of the glass was gone by the time I actually got to it. Yep. So it's sort of like a little bit leading the witness here. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was really good. Uh, I, I'm not too sure on the variety. Maybe a weird Chardonnay or something like that, but um, really quite ripe on the nose, but mm -hmm. not on the palate. Yep. A lot of these were like that, to be honest. Yeah. I, I, I wanted six, 45 bucks. I wanted 12 for 40. I got really like sort of mineralistic sort of, yep. my only guess was this is from the coast somewhere because like Marks. salt. Marks. That is that on the coast? Like well, yeah. like Mark. Lockie, can we reveal what this one is? Yo, how much did you say you were gonna 45. pay for? 45. Yeah, I 45. said 40. That's what is a bargain. This? What is that? The, the black, black cocky. The black cocky. So it's wicker blanc. This is a Vita. blend. This is a blend of Riesling, Gewurz, Chardonnay, and Chardonnay. Oh, this is really right, funny man. because I was like, "Is it Riesling?" I said, "Riesling on the nose, Chardonnay on the palate." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "I don't and then know." Chuck what in this some is. for good measure. For good measure, that's really cool. So, is it from a coastal region? Uh, uh, I can't. I can't pick it. It says Swan, Margaret River. There you yep, go. There you go. Amazing. Um, no, cool. I, just thought, I thought it was a really smart blend. Like, there's enough acidity. The reason kind of brings that, and the aromatics as well. Gewurz feeds into that kind of tropical aspect too. Chardonnay adds that nice texture, that kind of like banana -y ester thing. I think it's delicious. And the green bottle. Oh, I love the green so bottle. So much to the the shelf fucking, appeal. It yeah, looks so, it makes it look so juicy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like yeah. great. Riesling green bottles are the fucking greatest things ever. So Ooh. good. Black coffee. Check it out. Twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks. I mean, seen that's that huge. Yeah. Yeah. Good, now, the less the good thing out. about this is that look, a lot of these wines we don't see here in South Australia or probably anywhere else in the country because they that don't get shipped. Looks like it's got a crest full of blueberries. Looks like it's got no. a crest full of pineapples. That's kind of yeah, true. Pineapple yeah, we don't see a lot of these Western Australian wines cross the, the Nullarbor because it is really quite a challenge to like ship across from there, particularly with like natural wines and hands-off wines where yeah. everyone's worried about the unstabilization in transport. So yep. it's cool that someone has taken the risk. Thank you, Liam. Appreciate it. Two, uh, I really enjoyed this. Great little take on Fiano. Oh, Your Fiano. Fiano. Yeah, it smells, I know. smells I, exactly I know like Fiano. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know what they are, <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Word association things, you got Fiano, it's like, yeah, spot on, it smells exactly like Fiano. I said 28 bucks and three, I just kind of wasn't, uh, there was this uh, emptiness to the mid palette and it's sort of like a, a phenolic back palette, but that is funnily enough, that's the variety, it's Fiano. Yeah. Has yeah. the phenolic grip and that, yeah. that sort of texture to it. I bought so. six, which I think is a great compliment because I drink shitloads of Fiano. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I want for Fiano. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, never want for Fiano. I like so this the is chalkiness. Cool. That chalkiness is awesome. I had three, but I'd upgrade that to six now. Three, I'll stay at three for 30 bucks. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, out of 28. Bang. Yeah, cool. Value. Nice, good value. What is that? Uh, Fiona. Yeah. yeah, well, Fiona. you know what they are. But, yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't have revealed, I thought, I shouldn't have re revealed it, but that's what I thought. Right, vineyard Rose or a washboard? Could be both. Yeah, definitely Vineyard what Rose. About, definitely vineyard what rose. about windows? Like, Oh, oh shutters. Cool, shutters. shutters. Yeah, that's pretty fun. No, I thought, yeah, I think this is great. And you don't get to see much Western Australian Fiano. There's very little of it. Judging by this, there should be more of it. I wonder, because you see this chalkiness in Chardonnay from Mar, but Fiano seems to turn it right up a notch. Yeah. And we talk about Fiano being this really interesting, a little bit like Riesling, a really um, great magnifying glass for terroir. And that's just... 
the chalkiness is such a, a great way to describe that. It's literally like munching on chalk. Let's just put it in a green bottle, though. Yeah, everything should be in fucking green Riesling <laughs> bottles. Blue. Yeah, yeah oh, green, green cobalt, cobalt blue. blue. Oh, cobalt yes. Blue. Like yeah. that Sam Pellegrino. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Alrighty, uh, to the only red of the lineup. Fuck yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love this so much. This was cool. <laughs> I <laughs> thought this was... I Again, I had no idea what this, this, this lineup was, so I was like, oh, this is one of the other Josh Coopers. I was like, 90 bucks and 12, please. Wow. Loved it. Fuck, this is, yeah, that's Big sick. fan. Yeah, no, this is, I think it's a really cool, fun take on Margaret River Cabernet. <gasps> I said it was Margaret River Cabernet. Well done. <laughs> well done, dude, that's fucking sick. Because of the stabbiness, right? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, mean, that's, I mean, Cabernet in general, yeah. but I mean, Margaret River tends to get a little little bit more rightness yeah. to all of its Cabernets. They tend to be a little bit plummier, a little bit richer and more generous. Dude, I said all of those things in my tasting. It was so fun <laughs> to see this I'm video. I'm proud of you, bro. I'm proud of you. see all this shit on tape. <laughs> uh, uh, six bottles for me. 12 and 90 bucks. Uh, uh, six for 45. Amazing. Really, really 40 bucks. Cool. Amazing. So, preservative free Cabernet Savignon. From 2020. From 2020. Jesus. I called Christ. 2020 as well. Bro! <laughs> get the fucking. Get the crowd. Nah, get the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> that it could Bombs age for a long period. Like, it's still got life in it. A lot of life left in it. I actually it. think I said 10 to 15 years. Yeah, I reckon you could. Cool one. Can we get a little bit more in that glass? Yeah, just, you're just going to enjoy yeah. that now. I am. I am. That is really cool. One number four. What do we think? Beige. That's so funny because that's exactly what I thought. No what, shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I was just like, said I was like, this, beige. This is like, yeah. It smelled a little bit like a nutty dog and then didn't taste like a nutty dog. Like it just tasted like nutty. I haven't tasted a nutty dog. I haven't in a while. tasted a nutty dog. Smelled before. like a nutty dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, lucky. All right. Yeah. Cool. Oh, Not bad. Yeah, it stretches, stretches me. Stretches me a little bit. What is this? Chew it. Fabric. I love the fabric. So it's beige. It's beige I fabric. <laughs> The label um, looks pretty basic. So it's this, a gorgeous label. So it is sexy It's a label, Swan Valley yeah. Chenin Blanc. Wow. Um, which That's is, probably the reason you love it. Always, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, I like. I love the texture. I love the acid. Um, this is like super hands-off, like organically farmed, like no additions, no filtration, a little bit of sulfur, like that kind of full on natty kind of the best. I'm going to say my call on that being beige is more accurate than me saying that that's a 2020 <laughs> cabinet <laughs> in Margaret River. Yeah, see, like, I This a, was sick. This is a classic uh, wine from the region. I, yep, one of three bottles. Ooh. Uh, Why is that? Okay, the, my issue here is that uh, it seems a little bit more, and this is just my my humble opinion, seems to be a little bit more tree than grape. I was yep, just searching for a little bit more Chardonnay showcasing here. So I wanted six. Three. I wanted a dozen for 45 bucks. How is this happening? You're this like, is hey, strange. Chardonnay. I'm coming around to Chardonnay. It's, it's happening. Yeah, we just gotta up. find the right one. Yeah. yeah. Sick. How good. Four. So this is, this is funny. <laughs> so uh, we got sent a clean skin. Yeah. Uh, this is Vas Felix uh, Premier. So this is their mid level. Yeah. So this is a, yeah about thirty eight bucks. This is their mid level. Uh, it's, it's just been released probably or well, at the time of filming. It's so, about yeah. to be released next week. Yeah. By the time we release right. this video, it would have been out for about three or four weeks. Yep. Uh, okay. Liam sent us an early bottle. Uh, which is really nice. Thanks, Liam. So, Gorgeous. Um, here we are. I, yeah, I really like that. Yeah, I, I really liked it too. I think it's yeah. If you it's if just you the finish if me. you want to identify so nice. like literally the uh, typical Margaret River Chardonnay, it's that. Yeah, and look, knowing full well that this is a trade sample that's not actually or a sample of an unreleased wine, that's still bottle shocky. Yeah, which would explain that sort of softness of fruit or lacking fruit. Yeah, that'll flesh out guaranteed in the next couple of months. No mm. doubt. No, never no change. Doubt. I like it like it is. <laughs> and let's finish off. Uh, wine number sick. six. This wine of the lineup. Hundred percent wine of the lineup. Oh cool. really? Yeah. Oh, damn it! I was gonna gonna gun for that. Like we nah, could go for that. But this is far. Cool. I did love it. I thought it was awesome. So much fun. Yeah. Tropical and high acid. Little bit yeah. of texture. It's fucking it's, sick. It smells like like a green chili. Tacos. Fish tacos. Oh yeah. And and copious amounts of that wine, I would be yours. So it was kind of like... Uh, I want a 12. 12 for 30. Day 12, it's got to be. 38, yeah. magic number. Go! Let's go! 12 for 38. Got. This is Swan, hey, Shannon. Swan hey. Valley Wines, Shannon Blanc. Awesome. Hey, two Shannons, both from Swan yeah. as well. Very distinct styles. Liam played the man. Bitsy. Yeah. Well done. Liam played the man. Yeah. Well done. Um, yeah, love the tartrates. Um, nah, just fucking so much fun. I also love the pagan as fuck label. Like, yeah. whatever that is. <laughs> have, you seen, have you seen Hannibal, the show? No. Oh, oh you yeah, like yeah, it? Yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah. yeah. That reminds me of the fever dreams that Will's having. Like, yes! Like antlers and yes. deers and dead people and shit. Cool. First season of True Detective, right there. Mm. Yes. Yeah, awesome. Dude, Le yeah, thank you so much, Liam. Thanks, Liam. Legend. Thank legend. you so much. And I hope Seriously. you enjoyed the Unicos we sent you. Like, this, uh, we find so fascinating. These are wines that none of us would ever encounter. We can't no. get 
Sometimes locally. always aren't giving us these. Well, no, yeah. no, no, One of my favourite fantastic. things about this lineup, it is literally a snapshot of Western Australia's wine industry right now. Yes, like, absolutely. It's got like New Bass School, Felix. like, you know, a resurgence in Swan Valley, icons, yeah. uh, takes on classic uh, styles in a new way. Um, yeah, and, and some interesting good, varieties, so. like as well. I think it's fucking sick. Yeah, that is a delicious wine. Though. Cool. Uh, thanks very much, everyone. Thanks again, Liam. And uh, Cheers, Liam. see you next time. See you see you soon. Soon. Fun stuff coming.